we want to simplify the given complex fraction. And we'll show how to simplify the complex fraction using two different methods. But for this example, we'll use method two first. Which means the first thing we'll do is find the least common denominator of the fractions in the numerator and the denominator. And then we'll multiply the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction by the least common denominator. So beginning with the given complex fraction, let's write this as 10 sevenths. Let's write x as a fraction with the denominator of 1. So we have minus x over 1. On the bottom, we have 9 fifths plus x over 1. Looking at all the denominators, because we have a denominator of 7 here and a denominator of 5 here, and these two denominators are 1, the least common denominator would be 7 times 5, which equals 35. So because the least common denominator is 35, we're now going to multiply the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction by 35. So we'll multiply the top by 35, and we'll multiply the bottom by 35. Remember, if we multiply the top and bottom of a fraction by the same value, we get an equivalent fraction. So multiplying on the top, we have 10 sevenths times 35, which would be 35 over 1, and then minus x times 35. On the bottom, we have 9 fifths times 35, which is 35 over 1, and then plus x times 35. Before multiplying here, we have a common factor of 7 between the numerator and denominator. There's 1, 7, and 7, and 5, 7, and 35. So on the top, we have 50 minus 35x. Again, we can simplify here. There's 1, 5, and 5, and 7, 5s, and 35. So here we have 63 plus 35x. We need to be careful because we cannot simplify here. We cannot simplify across addition or subtraction. But to see if this does simplify, we should factor the top and the bottom. So notice how on the top, the greatest common factor would be 5. If we factor 5 out of the top, we're left with 10 minus 7x. Looking at the bottom, the greatest common factor would be 7. If we factor 7 out, we'd be left with 9 plus 5x. So in factored form, we can see the only common factor between the numerator and denominator is 1, and therefore this is not going to simplify, which means we can give the simplified complex fraction in either of these two forms. Now let's go back to the original complex fraction and simplify using method 1. As the complex fractions get more complicated, method 1 does tend to take longer, but it still works. Looking at method 1, the first step is to simplify the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction, which means you want to find this difference and find this sum. We know in order to add or subtract fractions, we need a common denominator. So looking at the top, notice how the least common denominator would be 7, because we have a denominator of 7 here, a denominator of 1 here. So we multiply the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 7. Now looking at the bottom, the least common denominator would be 5, so you multiply the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 5. So now, on the top we have 10 sevenths minus 7x over 7. On the bottom we have 9 fifths plus 5x over 5. Now that we have a common denominator on the top and on the bottom, we can find this difference and find the sum. So on the top, the common denominator is 7, and the numerator would be 10 minus 7x. Because 10 minus 7x does not factor, let's go ahead and put 10 minus 7x in parentheses. Again, we cannot simplify here because we cannot simplify across the subtraction. Now looking at the bottom, the common denominator is 5, and the numerator would be 9 plus 5x. Again, 9 plus 5x does not factor, so let's put it in parentheses. And now step two of the first method is to write this complex fraction as a division problem, because remember, a fraction bar means division. So because this fraction bar means division, we can write this as the top fraction divided by the bottom fraction. 
And now we can write this quotient as a product. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So as a product, the first fraction stays the same. And then we'd have times the reciprocal of this fraction, which would be five over the quantity nine plus five x. Again, nothing simplifies, so we go ahead and multiply. So on the top we would have the quantity 10 minus 7x times 5, or 5 times the quantity 10 minus 7x. On the bottom we'd have 7 times the quantity 9 plus 5x. Again, this does not simplify, but if we wanted to we could distribute. Distributing we have 50 minus 35x on the top. On the bottom we have 63 plus 35x. So again, either of these two forms would be acceptable for the simplified form of the given complex fraction. I hope you found this helpful.